Welcome to a special prime time edition of AgeWise, Healthy Cooking for the Holidays. I'm Eleanor Shano along with Chris Fenimore. For the next half hour, we're going to get your taste buds hopping for the holidays as we whip up healthy recipes for Thanksgiving, Hanukkah, and Christmas. All next on AgeWise, Healthy Cooking for the Holidays. Chris, all season you've been showing us how to, to cook our way to better health, but now that the holidays are here, we, I think we need a little extra help. That's when it's really difficult. Well, the next half hour you have promised to show us how to create three great traditional dishes that we've learned to love, but this time you're going to do them with a healthy twist. Well, as we've been talking, uh, there are three ways that I like to go about uh, making healthier versions of things that we all love. One is to reduce the amount of fat that mm -hmm. we uh, the cook, and the other one is to use substitutions of certain things uh, that are lower in, in fats. And then the third thing is to spice things up. Now this first recipe that we're gonna do is a healthy version of a sweet potato dish, which everybody wants as a side dish that's so traditional for Thanksgiving. Can't have Thanksgiving without sweet potatoes. Now we always had candied sweet potatoes. Well, yeah, you can't do that if you okay. wanna save some calories. Okay. But we're, this has a, a lot of flavor in it, and the substitution, in, in it's sort of a souffle or custard, the substitution is to use a non-fat evaporated milk. Mm. So it's evaporated so skim it's milk, and you use that, and well, let's, well, let's just get okay, over here. Okay, I have my apron. Your, I'm going to put my gloves on. You do the cooking. I'll do the helping. Okay. Let's go to work. You get on this side, because okay. I think you're going to be the stirrer. Um, one of the, uh, of course, it's, it's sweet potatoes. And one of the things that's confusing to people is that they often say things like, uh, well, I like yams, not sweet candied potatoes. Candied yams, right. Well, candied yams and every kind of yam that, you, uh, every kind of sweet potato you get is a sweet potato, not a yam. They just use that word yam. A yam is a big, ugly, white, fibrous tuber that nobody eats here in this country. Everything that we get is sweet potatoes. Here are two different varieties. This is a red garnet. I'm going to cut it open so you can see how bright mm -hmm. and orange that, uh, that color is. And then this is the one that people often call a yam. Um, and okay. so you can see colors, that this one color is sort of the same. Well, isn't it's it? a little bit lighter in uh, in it's sort of a yellowish, mm -hmm. and this one has um, a, a red skin, and this one has a sort of an orange skin. I find that these red garnets have more sugar content. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's starch that turns into sugar. What I've done is to bake them. Uh, I baked one at 450 degrees for two hours. Ooh, now, people are gonna say, you're crazy, you know, you're overdoing it. But that's the way to bring out the natural sweetness of the sweet potato. And... 450 degrees for two hours? Yeah, for two hours. But the big thing, of course, is that you, um, <laughs> you don't want to uh, uh, do this on a pan. You wanna put it on some aluminum foil. Now, the, the recipe uh, calls for um, two yams, but this one was so huge that I think we're going to get by with one. And, um, and I'm just going to scrape it out. You'll see it comes right out. Um, and it has that beautiful caramelized edges to it. Chris, what about microwaving? I, I know a lot of us are in a hurry and we stick the sweet potato in the microwave. Um, Not as it, good? No. It, you won't get the same effect. You won't get the, the, uh, the ch transformation of the starches into sugars mm -hmm. at that rate. Is this banana left over from your lunch? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. no. Well, actually, if you would peel that uh, and okay. put that into the, uh, into the bowl, um, I should really have one that's a little bit riper than that. Well, that, Not, that has a lot of... It's ripe. Mm -hmm. yeah, oh, yeah. You Is that going to do? Can oh, that's perfect. Yeah, put it right in there. Um, we're going to put two tablespoons of brown sugar. And you mm -hmm. say, well, I thought this was going to be low f f fat. Well, it's going to be low fat. It won't be totally no calories. Uh, so there is a little bit of sugar. Um, I'm going to put um, a pinch and a half of salt. But again, this is for everybody. It's not well, like, you know. And, the and realistically, things have to taste good. Yeah. And then we're going to put in two egg yolks. Okay. And um, you could use egg beaters. 
if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. That'd be fine. Okay. And if you start, if you mash this up, because while you're mashing this, all right. And if you give it a good whisk, okay. uh, actually, I've done this in in a with a you know a beater, with a Cuisinart you know. or a yeah. Well, blender. actually, I haven't done it in a Cuisinart, but I've done it with a, a hand mixer. Um, I'm going to make mm. it a little bit easier because I'm going to add in some liquid, but just stir it slowly now because mm. you don't want that to go all over the place. This is the evaporated skim milk. No, this is okay. going to be a rich and tasty dish, and the banana gives it some additional sweetness. It's also got a lot of good nutrition in it. Sweet potatoes happen yeah. to be terrific for you, and, and so are bananas. Now, instead of greasing the pan, of course, I'm going to use a vegetable uh, nonstick spray, just a one quart. This, this is nice because it doesn't make too much. And then I'm going to prepare the topping. I have a, about a quarter of a cup of raisins and a tablespoon of sugar and a teaspoon of cinnamon. And I'm just going to mix those together, get them nice and coated. Mm. All right, how's oh, that looking? Is, is that all? The consistency is, we don't have to get all the lumps out, do we? No, no. Okay. All right, now I'm just going to give it another little bit of uh, a shot here. That's all, so just to your, get it. You, this is your <laughs> You have that touch. I just didn't want to make it. The mess all over the place. All right, now we're just going to put this into the casserole dish. All right, mm -hmm. and this is going to bake in a fairly slow oven for about 20 minutes. At what and then temperature? It's, I believe, it's 300, mm -hmm. 300 mm -hmm. degrees or 325. And then after 20 minutes, we're going to sprinkle this on the top. I don't want to do it now because it would ruin okay. it. But I have one that's already done, and I want to bring that out to, ha to show you what it looks like. In here? Uh, it's in the top. Okay. We're going to pull this out. Good. Okay. Now, actually... Oh, oh beautiful. It, it does come... Mm. When oh, the aroma. Yeah. Oh, the aroma. <laughs> The nice thing about this is that you can prepare it ahead of time uh, for your dinner and then, you know, bake it at the last just minute. put it in to bake it uh, to time at the end of the meal or you can bake it ahead of time and then just, you can serve it almost room temperature. Um, to I let think it that's just important uh, so. on big holidays because, you know, we can't let everything go to the last minute. No. Now look at this. It, it has a, a souffle-like consistency uh, and I've got oh. a little fork for you here because and, and the, the helper and the, the taster. That's right. Okay. So, Got to have a little taste of that. What do you think of that, Eleanor? That is about as rich and as delicious as anything I've ever tasted. It really it surpasses candied sweet potatoes. Well, that's the thing. You know, you won't miss the candied sweet potatoes when you mm. have this, but what you're not doing is loading up on a lot of of uh, of the fats that would be in here if you were using butter for that custard or you know Chris, whole milk or cream to make the custard and souffle. There's nothing in here except a little bit of sugar. Just yeah. And some uh, skimmed evaporated milk. Yeah. The rest just a wonderful sweet potato, a healthy vegetable, and ah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So we've got Thanksgiving covered. Uh, <laughs> now when we come back, a healthy way to make potato latkes favorite dish for Hanukkah, and that's next on AgeWise Healthy Cooking for the Holidays. The Jewish holiday of Hanukkah is fast approaching, and with it, all of the wonderful dishes that are part of this holiday. Yummy things like crisp potato latkes. Now, you tell me, you can make a heart-healthy potato latke. Well, it's sort of, it is a break with tradition, because the, the story of Hanukkah is the story of the oil, 
And uh, one of the reasons why people make potato latkes as part of the religious observance uh, and remembrance is to show that the oil lasted longer than it should have the miracle and, and so on. So um, uh, to make uh, low-fat latkes is sort of against the religious tradition uh, and the cultural tradition, but it certainly uh, is a lot easier. But it's easier. in favor of a long, healthy life, That's so, right. so we're breaking with Hopefully tradition. you'll have more Hanukkahs to enjoy. Right. There are a couple of tips that I've picked up over the years of, of uh, learning from people how, to, how they make their latkes and one of them is this one and that is to have a nice big bowl of ice water mm -hmm. and to grate your potatoes right into that ice water I have these um, these are red potatoes but they look like Yukon gold you want a sort of a waxier potato rather than a Idaho or baking potato and um, so and the ice in the water takes some of the starch out well, of the Well, the starch will, yeah, will become much less starchy. I also like to put a little bit of sweet potato in, not just for the color, but the flavor is great mm -hmm. and the texture change is nice. So I'll put that right into the ice water. And you say, well, gee, I thought the idea was that you have to get all the water out of it. Well, we've got a trick for that, too. And then another thing that will keep the potatoes from turning brown while you wait and while you make your batter is to grate your onion right, right into in this, right into the ice water again, right into this mixture. And some people like a lot of onion, some people like a little bit of onion. I like a lot of onion. Mm -hmm. I use a nice big onion. And to me, that's the, the nice part of the flavor of this is to have that So just onion. one sweet potato, how many white potatoes? About four or five, depending upon their size. Um, again, this is a very flexible recipe that if you were making it for a bigger crowd, of course you want to increase the proportions. Mm -hmm. Now I'm just going to stir this around a little bit to make sure that, uh, you know, that the, the ingredients are sort of mixed, the two different kinds of potatoes and the onions, but they get pretty mixed. And now the other thing is this potato ricer, which I use to extract okay. the liquid from it. All so right. if you would do that, Eleanor, so I'll, I'll put this dig in the right sink. In and just take a... Yeah, a couple of handfuls in there. And um, I find that uh, using the ricer for more than potatoes is, <laughs> is, okay, cr is great. All, you want all the water out of it? Oh, as much as you can, yeah. Press it down. Because the drier, the better. They'll be uh, easier to, okay. to handle. OK. And I'll just pull that down into here. And you can get some more. Okay. Um, but you'll see that it's almost fluffy in here once you've taken all that water out. And uh, it won't turn brown on you. It's really nice. Now I'm going to add to this uh, batch one egg to bind it together a little bit. And there are various recipes that I've seen that use flour and a little baking powder to lighten them up a little bit. Um, I actually like to use a little bisquick. Oh, uh, here. Didn't come out. Chris, we were talking in the first segment about making things that you can cook ahead. This is not one of them, right? No, not really. You could grind the um, potatoes ahead of time. That would save you some time. You can leave it in that ice water for an hour or more. But potato latkes is something you want to put, cook and eat. You really don't want to have them sitting around. Um, I'm going to put a little bit of salt in this recipe, about a teaspoon of salt. The reason being, I just can't bear the thought of having potatoes without salt. <laughs> it just doesn't work. Um, okay, got that. Alrighty. All right, now I'm going to mix this up. See if I well, can get you one more here. Oh, we're fine with this. That's really, that's plenty. Okay. You're, you can be off duty. For All righty. <laughs> put that back in there. And um, now I'm just going to, as I said, I put a, a little bit of Bisquick, about two tablespoons of Bisquick. There's very little. Good old standby Bisquick. Well, Been yeah. Or, forever. again, you could use two tablespoons of uh, plain all-purpose flour mm -hmm. and then uh, a little bit of baking uh, powder so to lighten it up a little bit. And really, that's all there is to the batter. Now, the trick to making these low fat, which is what we're really after, um, is right here on the griddle. And if you want to come around on this okay. side um, and get me that spatula, um, this is our handy dandy oh, love oil that. sprayer. Love that. Um, We've been using that on our segments that you're doing on our weekly age wise. All I do is make sure that I have a little bit of this on the whole grill. And then I take the mixture and put down a nice size and press it down. I'm going to turn the heat up just a little bit. And because um, I like healthy sized latkes. Now, Chris, you, you've 
definitely want to use oil. You, you don't want to use one of the, what, Pam or whatever. That oh, you could use, use, you could use a, um, uh, that, but this is such a, a, an incidental mm -hmm. amount of oil, and it's olive oil. And it does add. And it adds like a little bit of flavor healthy. to it. It adds a nice little touch of good flavor. Yeah. And, you know, olive oil is sort of Mediterranean. I think it fits in with latkes, and although I think latkes we, we are actually to, we Eastern keep, European, probably in tradition, more than We have to keep with the old traditions. But I, I think that Americans are learning now that they have to change some of their eating habits. Yeah. Because it's been, you know, it's just been proven that uh, we, we just have to lighten up a little bit in this country. Well, I, I don't mind lightening up. As long as it still tastes good, I'm fine. Well, I mean, uh, your sweet potatoes sure tasted good. Okay. Now, once I get them out there, onto the griddle, mm -hmm. and now, you know, you could be making another batch of, of, uh, of them. I'm just going to spray this side as well. Someone said it looks like coleslaw patties. <laughs> it does look like coleslaw patties because it looks like carrot or mm -hmm. something that you might have mixed in, but it's, it's sweet potato, and, it, and the sweet potato actually takes a little bit less time to cook than the regular potato. So I'm just going to spray this on, a little bit of the olive oil on this side, just a little bit. Interesting how all, all of the nationalities cooked similar dishes, but they called them different things. My, my uh, German ancestors would call this potato pancake. Kartoffelfahne Kuchen. Well, Even they good might. For you you want to sure. flip one of those over so you you see uh, a little bit. Uh, is it getting brown yet? No, and it's not flipping too well, Chris. Okay. There, okay. I tell you what, I a have some longer, a little longer, a little bit longer than that. Yeah. But I have some that we've already. There we go. Now we're now we're cooking. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's it. You just want to make sure that they get nice and brown and they'll crisp nicely. But here, look at these. These are the, mm. the ones that we just did a little bit longer. Yeah, look at that. Oh, oh. yeah. Let's try one of these out because I, I got a plate over here. And okay. I'm going to turn, gonna turn all of those. Last few here. Let's come over this way. Get rid of our... Oh. And take one of these on your plate. What I've made is some applesauce just from apples and, a, and a, just a tiny color, little bit the of... the color of this apple? Well, because I, I make my apple sauce with the skins on, and then okay. I put it through a food mill. It really gets all of the flavor of the and apple. And all of the nutrition and all the, the nutrition. apple skin. And this is no-fat sour cream. Tastes good, too. Well, I think especially when you mix it with... Um, I'm going to put... I'm going to do it the way we do it in my house. Okay. I just make a little sandwich. All right. Um, and have a bite. I can do that. I can do that. Too. Uh, oh, yummy! If I do say so mm, myself. Double yummy. <laughs> mm, mm. Now you can have potato latkes uh, and not feel so guilty about it. After Hanukkah comes Christmas, and we have a wonderful baked dish recipe to share with you. So mm, stick around. It's a tradition to serve fish on Christmas Eve, and as you might guess, Chris has a healthy baked fish recipe. And I see we have um, the well, red we're gonna, and green. We're going to make it colorful because okay. uh, you know I figured uh, for the holiday I want to make sure that um, we have something that looks and feels festive. Before you get down to business, I know a lot of people are going to want a copy of all of these recipes. So all you have to do is send a self-addressed stamped envelope to AgeWise, 4802 Fifth Avenue, Pittsburgh, 15213. I just see everybody out there trying to oh, write them yeah. down Oh, yeah. No, it's better, better to watch what we're doing first because this uh, recipe is very simple in terms of its ingredients, but it does have a few little techniques. The one thing that you'll need for it... Um, is uh, one of these slicers. I don't know that you can cut anything as thin as you can uh, with a knife uh, unless you have one of these uh, little things. And they, they come in all varieties from expensive to inexpensive. This is a really cheap one. Mm -hmm. And it, it has a little blade on here and, and that you can adjust the, the height of the cut. Okay. Um, I suppose you could do it on a cuisine art or if you had that kind of fancy equipment. Um, and the main ingredient for the accompaniment to the fish 
is Fanoikia. Uh, those of you Fennel. who are Italian Fennel. out there, you'll know what I'm talking about. <laughs> we used to have this just as sort of um, an after-dinner um, digestive, uh, along with some fruit and nuts, and that's what we would uh, we would have after it's our meal. It's a wonderful, wonderful anise flavor, yeah. doesn't it? They call it fennel or anise, and then, as I said, we call it fenoikia. But mm -hmm. it goes tremendously well with fish. And what I've done, I was going to use cod, but we're actually using a little bit of uh, haddock. You want a nice white, flaky mm -hmm. fish uh, that I've put in the oven. Actually, I sauteed it on the stove in just a, a spray of olive mm -hmm. oil and then put it in the oven just to finish to come up to temperature. Uh, we're going to concentrate on making this slaw. So I'm going to try to do this with, without ruining my cello career. Um, and just lightly shave down, because they're really like little shavings at this point. Yeah, we'll, we'll save the, the uh, coloring from the red pepper. We don't need any... <laughs> that's, that's right. Oh, I'm not going to I'm not going to press right? it. Yeah. It's really sharp and it would just it would cut you. So you got to be careful with it. It's but you neat, do want it to really be a neat little gadget, it is. There, isn't it? Um the whole trick of this is that it's not going to this is not going to cook very long. It's Getting you, close there, Chris. Yeah, I'm just going I'm going to stop. I'm not going to be uh okay. Okay. That's all we need. Now, I'm going to do the same thing with uh the green pepper. And slice that. And you call this lemon pepper slaw. Right, because I'm going to flavor this slaw with not only the juice, but the zest of a nice lemon and some fresh cracked black pepper. And those are going to be great accompaniments to the fish flavors. Those of you who, um, you know, are interested in the Feast of the Seven Fishes, there aren't any particular fish. It's just that what we used to have was a sort of a, a fish fest. And my grandmother would make, uh, she would make squid and shrimp and smelts, but we didn't count the number. It was, it was more of a generic thing. There are people who actually make seven things. This would be a great one to make. You really mix is Irish, or, or Italian tradition, isn't it? Yes, um, it is. And, and yet a lot of religions um, abstain from eating meat on Christmas Eve, mm -hmm. so. Well, well, in the Catholic said, Church, you you couldn't, you couldn't eat at all before midnight, and it was a, the Christmas Eve was a day of abstinence. Uh, so you you didn't have any f uh, meat; you had to have only well, fish. I, I guess we were kind of um, moderate Catholics. We didn't <laughs> we didn't abstain, but we certainly didn't eat meat on Christmas Eve. All right, I got a nice pan, getting nice and hot. This is not going to cook very long. I'm just going to put a little bit of our famous mm -hmm. um, olive, oil. olive oil spray in we here. We love olive oil. Just a little bit. It, it's also a non-stick pan, so nothing would stick to this anyway. And we're just going to come okay, over here and come around on this side. get it all in there. And then this is a very quick toss. But in the meantime, I want to put um, the zest from this lemon the uh, outer skin, not the white part. The white part is bitter. Hmm. Do and you have a favorite aroma from your childhood that when you, <laughs> from the kitchen? Yeah, well, I, I have one, but it has nothing to do with this meal. It's the tomato sauce on Sunday <laughs> um, uh, that my grandmother would be making when I got back from, from church. Mm. The, uh, and I'm going to put uh, the juice of this lemon in here. And if you would just... Give that a, a stir around while I just... You know, this is so quick and simple. You don't want this to cook very long. The whole idea of this is that it's, it's supposed to keep its color and a little bit of crispness. Now the... Fennel, pepper. Now we got the, the lemon flavor in there, and I'm going to put lots of cracked black pepper. Because oh. that is the third way that we talk about having uh, a way of reducing fat and calories and so on and, and salt is that you want to increase the amount of flavors. Right. And the flavor of that lemon zest and all of these other flavors are really intense and terrific. Now... Can you serve this cold also? I suppose you could, but I, I um, uh, you could, I wouldn't cook it at all then. I would make it as a salad just a and just a, as a raw salad because a lot of people, you know, they, they eat their salad uh -huh. raw. But, the fish, uh, the fish. Ah, uh, the fish. Now, we're going to take this fish out of here. So all you did was uh, you, you just browned it a little bit, baked it. Right. Yeah. I'm going to put uh, just a little bit of this on a plate. 
just on a bed. Oh, how beautiful. What a wonderful, wonderful Christmas and, Eve. Well, yeah, think about making a big platter of this, not just, you know, and mm. then bringing it out on the table with some... Just a nice, delicate white fish. Some white fish. I'm going to put this piece over here and that piece over there, maybe a little bit more slaw over there. Chris, you have come up with three absolutely exquisite recipes, every single one of them uh, <laughs> healthy, light, and trust me, and I haven't had a chance to taste this well, one yet. Well, you, but should, you should have that, but I want to... Sweet potato wanna souffle, the potato latke, and just, oh, the aroma. Okay, now, All right. there you are. Have a little bit of taste of that. Just a little bit of that fish, ah. and the, you got to taste the slaw. Mmm, mmm. What do you think of that, huh? Mm. I can feel a new Christmas tradition coming on. Absolutely. <laughs> With a dish like this. <laughs> we want to thank all of you for joining us this, excuse me, bad manners talking with my mouthful. It happens but thank in the kitchen. thank you so much for sharing this very special primetime holiday edition of AgeWise. Hope you can join us each and every weekend for AgeWise. Do check us out. Chris is by frequently Saturdays at 6.30, Sundays at 12.30, right here on WQED. Chris Fenimore, and we both wish you a very safe, happy holiday season. Good night. Be well, everyone. See you soon. Good night. Mm.